organs and lungs and chest wall graph now what is compliance compliance is equal to change in volume divided by change in pressure also compliance is inversely proportional to elasticity and compliance is also inversely proportional to uh, stiffness now instead of remembering these formulas let's practically try to understand what compliance actually is see anything that can expand and keep large volume in it okay keep the volume in it is compliant anything that can expand and keep large volume in it is a compliant thing so let's try to understand by taking examples see let's take the first example let's say example of a balloon okay let's say this is a balloon now if you fill the air in balloon what will happen the air the balloon will throw the air out okay the balloon will not keep the air in it it will throw the air out it means it cannot keep the volume in it it cannot accommodate volume in it that's why balloon is elastic okay balloon is elastic but it is not compliant okay it is not compliant this this is this explains that why compliance is inversely proportional to elasticity see balloon cannot keep large volume in it now let's uh, say a uh, next example is a wooden mug okay let's say this is a mug okay and it can contain 250 ml of volume in it now if you add 250 ml of water in it can you add any extra water in it let's say if you want to add extra 500 ml of water in it can you add no you cannot and add any kind of extra volume in it that's why it is not compliant see it can the this wooden mug cannot expand and accumulate more volume that's why it is not compliant but it is stiff so this explains why compliance is inversely proportional to stiffness again anything that is elastic is not compliant it cannot accumulate larger volumes anything that is stiff cannot ac accumulate means it cannot expand and accumulate more volume that's why again it is not compliant now the third example of a compliant thing is uh, let's say polythene bag okay polythene bag a shopping bag let's say a shopping bag okay now how see it is it is an example of compliant thing let's say if you are going out for shopping okay and you have a shopping bag that can contain two t-shirts in it okay two t-shirts now you are you see a sale in the mall okay and you instead of purchasing two t-shirt you buy three t-shirts so what will you do you will just you you have suppose only one shopping bag that can accumulate two t-shirt so what will you do you will just push the two t-shirt two t-shirts okay and add the third t-shirt in it that's it simple will the shopping bag throw the third t-shirt out of it no the shopping bag will accumulate the third t-shirt it means you can add extra volume you can add the extra volume in the shopping bag okay and the shopping bag will keep the extra volume in it instead of throwing it out like an elastic uh, elastic balloon or uh, and also it will expand unlike the stiff mug so again anything simply practically if you want to understand what is compliance then remember that anything that can expand and accumulate volume in it extra volume in it is a compliant thing now obviously that that explains why compliance is inversely proportional to elasticity and stiffness so having said that let's try to understand what is this graph okay this gra graph is confusing as well as complicated at times so instead of digging deeper into it remember the main high yield point that you need to re remember for step 1 so i have made the points here now for understanding this first understand this this see this orange orange line is for chest wall this red line is for lung and this blue line is for combined lung and chest wall now understand that this is a line for chest wall it is not intrapleural pressure okay a lot of people confuse it for this it is not intrapleural pressure see i be, i am putting a cross on it it is not intrapleural pressure see here are the lungs let's say then comes pleura and then comes chest wall it is made up of skin muscles fat also skeleton anything so see this chest wall and lung here they are talking about chest wall and lung they are not talking about pleura so first understand that thing now understand that see when you 
कि सिर्फ दिस इज एफ आर सी ओके दैट इज एंड ऑफ एक्सपीरेशन यू आर ना इधर इंस्पायरिंग नॉट एक्सपायरिंग एट दिस पॉइंट वेन यू स्टार्ट इंस्पीरेशन दैट इज द वॉल्यूम इन द लंग विल इंक्रीज सी द प्रेशर ऑल्सो कीप्स ऑन इंक्रीजिंग इन बोथ लंग्स चेस्ट वॉल एंड ऑल्सो लंग एंड चेस्ट वॉल सिस्टम एज यू कीप ऑन इंस्पायरिंग द प्रेशर ऑल्सो इंक्रीजेज द प्रेशर मूव टूवर्ड्स दिस साइड सी टूवर्ड्स राइट साइड ओके सो फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड दैट थिंग also understand that for most of the part the pressure in the chest wall remains negative okay so if you keep on inspiring till tidal volume it's negative for most of the part it remains negative but after a certain limit it start becoming positive so that's the first thing now another the main, see these are the main high points that you need to remember see first first point is that compliance of lung alone is more than compliance of lung and chest wall system and second point is compliance of chest wall alone is more than compliance of lung and chest wall system so let's try to understand by this second second point see what does the second point say it says that if the curve is steep okay this we are talking about the curves if the curve is steep steep means th there is a sudden increase or sudden decrease then the thing is more compliant okay and if the curve is flat for anything then it is less compliant so let's try to understand by making a graph for it see let's say this is the graph okay here is here is the volume here is the pressure okay let's say one oh sorry one two and three here one two and three now see let's say this is the first graph Okay, and this is the second graph. See, this is the first graph. This is the second graph. Now, in first graph, see that. See what is the change in pressure here? This big pressure. Let's say for from zero to one for this much part. What is the change in volume? It it, it from zero it moves to three. See, it means the change in volume for the first is delta V is equal to three. And what is the change in pressure here? Zero to one, that is one. So what is what is the compliance here? It is three. For graph one, the compliance is three. Now for second graph, see what is the change in volume from here to here? It is just zero to one. That is delta V is equal to one. And what is change in pressure here from zero to three? It means divided by three. That is zero point three three. Okay. So see this graph is steeper. See the rise is very quick. this graph is flatter for steeper graph the compliance is more for flatter graph the compliance is less so that's what i mean by uh, this steeper curve has more compliance flatter curve has less co less compliance so see this here the chest wall graph the chest the line for chest wall is more steeper see it rises very quickly see in the straight direction that's why see it is more steeper so it has more compliance the same is true for the lung lung graph see the rise is very steeper it rises very steeply so it means it has more compliance while the line for chest and lung wall combined see it is more flatter in comparison to chest and lung wall that's why it is more uh, sorry it is less compliant so again remember that chest wall is the graph for chest wall is more compliant lung alone is more compliant but when you combine both of them it is less compliant because the graph is flatter in both of this the graph is more steeper okay now let's move to third point okay this is the highest yield point okay probably more than 50 to 60% of question will be dependent on this see what does it say see whenever they say that the pressure is zero this zero means atmospheric pressure okay let me write it here atmospheric pressure whenever they say that atmospheric pressure sorry see whenever they say they said that trans organ static pressure or you can say airway pressure is zero what will be the volume in lung the volume in lung will always be equal to functional residual capacity this is the highest yield point you should learn from this graph again when the pressure in the the transorganic static pressure or the airway pressure is zero what will be the volume in lung it will be equal to functional residual capacity 
Now also remember that pulmonary vascular resistant at this point at FRC or at when the atmospheric pressure is zero at that time the pulmonary vascular resistance is minimum this is one of my favorite and interesting concept but uh, we will not discuss in this video so remember this two point at atmospheric zero atmospheric pressure in airway means the airway pressure is zero the volume in the lung is functional residual capacity and the pulmonary vascular resistance is minimum at this point this is this is the highest yield point in this whole discussion now these are the few cases that decrease the compliance fibrosis pulmonary edema pneumonia in all these cases there is increase in stiffness and we as we discussed that whenever stiffness increases compliance decreases now in emphysema and aging the compliance increases because in this case there is decrease in there is decrease in elasticity in both of these cases, emphysema as well as aging. So when the elasticity decreases, compliance increases. And when stiffness increases, compliance decreases. So this was all about compliance and this graph. If you remember these high points, then it will be easy for you. Now the last point is hysteresis. Now what does it they basically mean to say in this graph? See, they want to say, they, they are explaining that the graph for inspiration and the graph for expiration they are different and let's try to understand why they are different see in in inspiration it requires a lot of pressure to add volume okay while during expiration it does not require a lot of pressure see let's try to understand see let's say the, we want to discuss the change in volume during this much change in pressure okay for this much change in pressure see for this much pressure what is the change in volume during inspiration it's very small okay for the same change in pressure what is the change in volume during expiration it is quite bigger see okay this is what hysteresis is all about see th this is different why is it different see let's try to understand see during inspiration you have to apply a lot of pressure to add, vo add volume why is it so see the first reason is that the radius of alveoli let's say this is alveoli alveoli okay the radius of alveoli is less and whenever the radius of alveoli is less they have tendency to collapse this is another super high uh, concept whenever the radius of alveoli is less they have a tendency to collapse easily so during the start of inspiration during the start of inspiration the uh, radius of the alveoli is less that's why they have tendency to collapse and that's why it takes so much of pressure to add volume in the alveoli another thing is that the elastic fibers are contracted see the elastic fibers they are contracted when we start the, the inspiration so when they are contracted it really becomes tough to add extra volume in, in the alveoli during inspiration because they are fully contracted so it, it they are like quite elastic so it it becomes really tough to add extra volume so these are the main reason that and that that are needed to understand why we need a lot of pressure to add extra volume during inspiration so this was all about the compliance and lung and chest wall graph